The Nazi Germany had one of the most unique and bizarre aircrafts during the World War II. Some of them were so far ahead in their concept design that the engineering of that time was limited to achieve their target. Germans were also among the pioneers in creating the world's first operational jets in history. A game-changing aircraft was unveiled in June of 1944, altering the course of history. The Messerschmitt Me-262 became the world's first operational jet fighter, tasked with shielding Germany from a swarm of Allied heavy bombers. The 262 appeared unstoppable to bomber crews and their escort fighter pilots, hardly visible before unleashing its devastating 30mm guns. But this revolutionary jet fighter was too little too late for the Germany during the World War II. Today we will look at the Germany's operational jet aircrafts, some of which flew before the war had even started. The Heigl HE-280 the Heigl HE-280 was an early turbojet power fighter aircraft designed and produced by the German aircraft manufacturer Heigl. It was the first jet fighter to fly in the world. The HE-280 was built on Hans von Ohain revolutionary gas turbine propulsion and the Ernest Heigl's work on the HE-178, the world's first jet-powered aircraft. After the HE-178 was received with indifference by the RLM, the German Reich Aviation Ministry, Heinkel decided to begin development on a jet fighter in the late 1939. A pair of turbojets were placed in the mid-wing location to provide more thrust. It also had an unusual tricycle undercarriage at the time, but the fuselage was rather standard. The first prototype aircraft was constructed in the summer of 1940, but it was unable to proceed with the powered test flights owing to development issues with the proposed engine, the HES-8. As a result, it was originally flown as a glider until appropriate engines were ready six months later. The absence of state funding slowed engine development, delaying work on the HE-280, yet it is claimed that the fighter may have been operational earlier than the competing Messerschmitt ME-262 and provided certain advantages over it. On 22nd of December 1942, during a mock dogfight in, the, in front of RLM officials, the HE-280 demonstrated its vastly superior speed over the piston-powered Focke-Wulf 190. Shortly after, the RLM decided to order 20 pre-production test aircraft to precede a batch of 300 production standard aircraft. However, engine development remained a stumbling block for the HE-280 program, during 1942, the RLM directed Heinkel to discontinue work on the HES-8 and HES-30 in order to concentrate on the HES-011. Because the HES-011 was not expected to be ready for some time, Heinkel chose the competing BMW 003 engine, which was also delayed. As a result, the second HE-280 prototype was built with Yonkers Jumo 004s. Work on three-engine concept for the Germany's first jet fighter, the HE-280 proceeded. The first prototype built in 1942 was outfitted with Argus AS-014 Pulse jets, which predated turbojets and were simpler design. To generate thrust, air is combined with fuel and fire at the rate of 45 pulse per second, hence the name Pulse Jet. The HE-280 was a low-cost, easy-to-manufacture aircraft that froze up during testing, leading to the loss of the prototype. The pilot was ejected off of the plane in the world's first ejection seat, making him the first pilot in the history to do so. The Air Ministry bought 20 pre-production versions in the 1943, followed by 300 combat aircraft, although Messerschmitt emerged as a rival. On March 17, 1943, Erhard Milch, Inspector General of the Luftwaffe, directed that the development on the HE-280 be diverted to other projects. The cancellation was caused by a mix of technical and political issues, the ME-262's comparable function was undoubtedly crucial in the decision. As a result, only the nine test aircraft were ever completed and the HE-280 never achieved operational status or saw actual combat. The Messerschmitt ME-262 The Messerschmitt competitor designed the ME-262 first flew on July 18, 1942 and featured a very similar shape to the HE-280, a long, narrow fuselage with twin underwing BMW jets. The jets were originally positioned at the wing roots, but due to technical concerns with the Heinkel designs, it was decided to relocate them beneath the wings to make switching and repairing them easier. This will turn out to be an excellent decision because the BMW jets were hefty, the wings were swept at 18.5 degrees to try to push the center of the gravity backward as much as feasible. By postponing the effects of compressibility on the wing surfaces, this nearly accidental design adjustment 
would allow the 262 to perform far better at high speeds. Much effort was extended to attempting to combine these BMW power plants. Nevertheless, they did not function. It took a considerable time for the engines to even reach the Messerschmitt design team. When they were used, they had a horrible habit of flaming out, putting both the pilot and the aircraft in danger. On its maiden flight in July 1942, the BMW engines were not even used in the 262, which were instead outfitted with the Junkers design, the Jumo 004. It was quickly decided to forgo the BMW jets entirely and concentrate on converting the 262 to utilize these Junkers engines in the future as they were slightly more dependable. Heigl came to the same conclusion when he fitted Jumo engines to the HE280. When it became evident that the HES8 will not be ready soon, the 280 flew satisfactorily with the Jumo installed, although they were substantially heavier than the engines meant for the aircraft. As a result, performance suffered, particularly when compared to the 262, which was built for the ground up to accommodate these larger engines. The Heikel 280 was cancelled in the March 1943 in favor of the ME262, which was a more superior design. Pressure grew on the 262 program, which was getting more dependable at this stage, with some Junker engines managing to run for 50 to 100 hours before requiring repair. This was a significant improvement over having to be adjusted after every flight and it appeared that the aircraft was almost ready for production. However, the 004A engine, which can run for 100 hours, could not be mass-produced since it required an excessive amount of sophisticated strategic materials to be built. The 004B development for production would consume significantly less fuel, but would be a poor engine that would require overhaul after around 10 hours of flight time. By the end of May 1943, ME262 was virtually ready to go. However, neither the materials nor the labor were ready for mass production and Hitler himself delayed the jet's debut by ordering that the fighter be modified for service as a fighter bomber. Because of this, the jets did not reach the frontline forces until at least the April of 1944. These production aircrafts known as the ME262A1 or Schwabel or Swallows in English were quite remarkable, recording their first kills in the June of 1944. The aircraft was almost too quick for its own good requiring the jet pilots to shift tactics and devise their own systems in order to maximize the length of time they could hold on to their 30mm guns on a target before having to pull away. Later variants could launch unguided rockets into a dense column of bombers before launching a conventional attack run with their Mark 108 guns. Before the wars and around 1400 ME262s were manufactured, however, because the challenges with the procuring them and maintaining the Jumo 004 engines, only around 100 were operational at any given time. It was a wonderful aircraft at the time with excellent kill rates, but Germany couldn't produce enough of them to have an influence on the war and it was time to look into new designs. The Heinkel HE-178 Hans von Ohayen, a 21-year-old PhD student, invented a jet engine without a propeller. In 1936, he applied for a patent for the Germany's first jet engine and was employed by Heinkel in 1937. By 1939, one of his engines, the HES-3, has been used to power an aircraft for the first time, keeping an HE-118 airborne long after its own engine had been shut off. The HE-178 was a small, simple aircraft built around the HES-3 in 1939. It had a jet engine mounted in the center of the Ryan metal fuselage with an intake in the nose and an exhaust in the rear. It had high-mounted wooden wings, retractable landing gears and a basic cockpit. It took to the skies on 27th of August 1939, days before the invasion of Poland and the start of the World War II. Heinkel had been developing the 178 in secrecy and it was finally shown to government officials in 1939. However, it could only reach 372 miles an hour, only 20 miles an hour more than the fully combat laden the BF-109 and had a 10-minute endurance period. Only one HE-178 ever flew and it was destroyed in an air raid in 1943. The Heinkel HE-162 Germany was struggling to get enough fuel and engines for the Messerschmitt 262, so it was decided to create a new fighter aircraft using the BMW power plant. This was due to the success of the Arato 234 and the FI-103 projects, and the BMW power plant was finally beginning to show promise. The Heinkel HE-162 was a cheap, easy-to-build and fly aircraft designed by Heinkel. The design that won the contract was the HE-162, which used the same twin-tail tricycle landing gear as the failed HE-280, 
The ejector seat was necessary as the location of the jet engine on the top of the fuselage meant any manual bailout would likely end in disaster. The HE-162 was a simple aircraft with four bolts attached to the fuselage and a lot of structural components held together by plywood glue. It had gone from drying to the first flight in less than 90 days, with the design chosen in September and the maiden flight occurring in December 6. However, the factory that made the glue that held the aircraft frame together had been bombed and the replacement glue was acidic and ate through the wood, leading to many aircraft being lost and test pilots killed before they discovered their mistake. The first 46 aircraft were delivered to the units in January of 1945 and were first in combat in April. However, the unit lost 13 aircraft and 10 pilots with only two of them being shot down. The original plan of putting Hitler's youth pilot in the aircraft was not successful. The remaining planes were lost due to the structural problems, flights and the perilous dead taking landings. Due to Germany's unconditional surrender a month after they entered service, the BMW engines ran out of gasoline and HE-162 could only stay a lot for 30 minutes, implying that the unit would not have a chance to deploy the aircraft effectively. F-5103 or V-1 the Germans began to deploy the first of their vengeance weapons, the V-1, in June of 1944. It was a cruise missile powered by the August Pulse jet, launched in France, flew over the channel and was guided by its autopilots to its target in London, where it crashed into the ground and detonated its 850 kg warhead. However, the V-1 was inaccurate, as it could land anywhere in a 10-mile radius around the target. The Fiddler F-5123 Reichenberg was a human-guided bomb built to attack Allied shipping during a potential amphibious invasion. It was an, a suicide aircraft, but the pilots were said to be volunteers of the fanatic Leonidas squadron, who were willing to give their lives for the Reich. The pilots were trained in the vehicle and then bailed out moments before impact, but it is questionable how realistic this would have been. The pilots were said to be volunteers of the Leonidas squadron who were willing to give their lives for the Reich. Luckily for them, the Reichenberg was never deployed with Germany viewing the project as the unnecessary waste of trained pilots and resources and they opted to continue with the missile project instead. The Arado AR-234 The Air Ministry issued a need for the jet-powered recon aircraft in 1940 and the Arado responded with their E-370. The Air Ministry decided to buy two prototypes of the Arado AR-234 which would first Test flight in the June of 1943. The 234 was bigger than the Heinkel HE280 or the Messerschmitt ME262 and used the same engine configuration, a BMW jet under each wing. These would shortly be replaced by the UMO 004, just as they were on the ME262. The design of the Arado was simple, with high mounted wings and a cylinder fuselage with a T-shaped tail. To save weight and increase speed, the Arado would take off from a wheeled trolley, which would be jettisoned as it lifted off the runway. On landing, the AR-234 would use three skids, one under the fuselage and one under each engine set. Landing a jet aircraft with no ability to brake was a unique experience. The Arado AR-234B will be redesigned with a retractable landing gear and external bomb mounting points, allowing it to be used as the first jet bomber. It will enter service in the summer of 1944, conducting high-speed reconnaissance for lights over France and the UK. The bomber variant will arrive a few months later and it will see combat against the Allied units during the Battle of the Bulge. The Arado AR-234 attempted to destroy the Ludendorff Bridge at Remark in March 1945, losing a large number of jets in the process. Just over 200 Arado 234 were completed, with very few actually seeing service due to the rate of attrition on the UMO engines. The C-series of the AR-234 would see the aircraft mount for BMW engines instead, but this came too late in the war to change anything. The Horton HO-229 The Horton HO-229 was a prototype flying wing fighter bomber that first flew in February of 1945. It was created in response to the 1943 3 by 1000 demand for the aircraft capable of carrying 1000 kg bombs over a distance of 1000 km at the speed of 1000 km per hour. The Horton brothers, both BF-109 fighter pilots themselves had already developed a flying wing design and submitted it for the 3 by 1000 criteria. The Humo 004 engines that powered the 262 had the potential to reach the 1000 km per hour requirement, but were not fuel efficient. The Horton bombers built the first two prototypes of the aircraft, with the V-1 being an unpowered glider and the V-2 being the first to fly under its own power. The V-3 prototype was built by the Gota, which were to take over testing and manufacturing of the rest of the prototype. 
Pigotha G0229 was a more mature design adapted for mass production and revised intake engines and UMO 004 engines. It never flew, with the airframe being captured by the Allies in the late stages of the production. The war was over, and no more jets were produced, and that was it. These airframes were the most mature designs which made it to the prototype phase and production phase. There were many other designs which never took off. While Germans were building these futuristic planes, Allied forces were also building their own jet-powered planes. Some of the successful Allied examples of the first jet-powered planes are the US Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star and the British Gloucester Meteor. Thanks for watching. In my next video, I will be discussing some of the engines that powered these insane jets. So, stay tuned.